Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this very uh, cold but cozy Monday afternoon. I know it's somewhat your lunch time, so appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, my name is Hamid. I'm from United Women Singapore. I lead the Girls to Pioneer STEM program. So uh, Nadia, perhaps the next slide just to share a bit more about the STEM program. Yes, here, okay. Yeah. So the Girls to Pioneer STEM program is all about encouraging and inspiring and hopefully uh, encouraging you to pursue STEM in higher education and careers. And we do that through activities such as hands-on workshops, field trips, uh, talks such as this, where our primary aim is to connect you to female role models from different STEM industries so that you hear from their experiences directly and we all learn from them directly as well. I do want to quickly thank my student volunteer, Anika, who's been uh, working with me on this program from UWC as well. And we are very excited to bring this opportunity with the Aspire Next team to the girls at Girls in Tech at UWC Dover. Uh, next slide. So today you'll be hearing from the women of Aspire Next. We have Bavika, Deepa and Suganda who will be talking about cloud technology and you know also give us insights into what they themselves do at Expire Next. So it's a whole new terrain for me. I'm very excited to learn. I know the girls at UWC are in girls in tech. Perhaps probably you're better worth well versed in this than me. But we, uh, without any further ado, I would like to hand it over to Bavika who will bring us through the introduction and tell us more about cloud essentially. Over to you, Bavika. Thank you, Hamid, and good afternoon to everybody who's on the call. And I think I must also congratulate Anika for uh, supporting uh, this initiative with you. And I, I think I'm equally happier and prouder that, you know, this is pretty much an all girls and all ladies uh, conversation. I personally subscribe to a lot of uh, forums which are focusing on increasing women diversity, whether it is in Singapore or other uh, conversations. So. I'm very, very keen, excited, and happy to provide my views, of course, uh, uh, joined by the clients of them who will have their perspective. But I'm definitely up in uh, supporting Hamid in any way, even now and in the future, for any of the, the, the students from your group who want to talk to me even one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I'm definitely putting up myself up there, whether you need it or not. But without taking too much time, I think uh, I do want to cover a couple of things. I think I have 10 minutes or less, uh, as Hamid has given me to talk. So I do want to give you a little bit of a, a background about myself and then, of course, about the company we represent. However, that's not the focus uh, for the conversation. It's important that between Dweepa Sakanda and myself, we can tell you more about what's going on in, in the world of technology largely focusing on cloud and i'm sure you you know that there could be potential careers that you could take up uh, because it is an industry that is growing at almost i think 40 percent uh, year on year and definitely I, I have a lot of stats which i'm not sharing now but definitely in southeast asia uh, rajli asean anz japan korea taiwan if you see each of these they are all of these countries are growing very, very fast in the whole technology and the whole transformation conversation. So uh, basically, I've had about 20 years of experience in, in the industry. And uh, I spent a lot of years in the telco, which is telecommunication. So uh, you will be surprised. And maybe you guys know that all the internet that comes to our mobile phones and our laptops actually comes through large cables which are actually under the sea in the Pacific, in Atlantic, some of these, right? And when I used to work for uh, the telco that I spoke about, uh, it was obviously difficult to believe that how all the information actually travels under the sea and it reaches in a flash of a, not even a micro or a millisecond, right? Onto our computer when we reach Facebook or Google or Yahoo or whatever else, right? So it's very intriguing and very, very interesting, uh, you know, and, and maybe offline we can share some information, Hamid, that the girls may want to look up, uh, um, you know, on uh, offline on areas that they should definitely read through. It's very interesting and will increase their knowledge in this whole uh, 
new world of technology that everybody is talking about right so flipping uh, this thing so uh, coming to aspire next uh, we basically a 10 year old company we have offices in india singapore malaysia philippines opening up in australia going into other parts of england and the emea region so don't worry about remembering this it's not something you girls need to bother much about right but yes that's the company uh, the three of us represent here can you go to the next chart right so i don't know if i can do a show of hands here just to ask that how many people or girls have already heard about cloud i don't know if i can can you all raise your hands because i have some sort of a view of the the room you are in i can see one anika can you see more hands up in in and who who people know about cloud okay i can't see so many hands going up i think i saw at least two okay not too bad at least uh, we've got some but that's why it's even more relevant that we are here to tell you about cloud and don't get enamored by the next chart when it comes up but uh, essentially if i have to tell you uh, what is cloud right so imagine that every piece of information that you are using the internet for actually has to there has to be information that is stored right so if you go to i'm not sure if you all use amazon or lazada right so if you go to amazon.com then when you open there will be like a host of information right where you click for what you want to shop what products all the other bits i'm sure the girls love shopping and at least they've used a amazon or some sort of a online shopping tool <laughs> so if you kind of log on to one of these all this information that you see has to be actually physically uh, be reposited somewhere right and in the technical uh, language it is called a server it's called s e r v e r you may want to write down this word because a server is something which is like your if you know your computer if you before the laptops everybody used desktop a desktop would have another machine kind of a thing right which was the cpu so that actually kept a lot of information in today's world when large websites keep their information it's not on one small desktop or a laptop it's a bigger machine right and that bigger machine is called a server right and that is one term you will hear in the cloud world so all this information gets deposited and each time you ping a particular so if you want to buy say a specific lipstick of a specific brand right it will actually go to the internet look for the information and it will give you the information like do you have stock right so that means when you do this whole shopping thing you've got to go and that information comes back to use to you right which again travels on some sort of a network backbone right and you'll be surprised sometimes sitting in singapore or malaysia you'll actually be getting information which is either in canada it could be in america it could be in any part of the world which doesn't bother you because you're just interested in the shopping and you want your stock right so all of this information and this whole universe actually earlier used to sit in specific locations and they were called data centers another word you want to write down data data centers right which were physical large rooms buildings right there would be buildings of buildings which is where these servers would be sitting and all the information would be going in and out of the servers now what's happened is people are saying too expensive too much information there's just so much online content that it's not funny right and there is no end to growing the physical capacity right we we can't be putting so much money in real estate to just keep these servers in rooms so what happened was there was a technology which is called cloud and as you can imagine the word cloud itself will trigger like it's big it's large it's all over the place right so these servers instead of physical became virtual so they went into some huge capacities of data center which are owned 
by different companies. And people will buy capacity from that big infrastructure, which is called cloud. So in other words, you must Google offline whenever you get a chance. Don't go too much into the details, but I just want you to think about it from a real life perspective so you know what it means. Taking a step back, um, so I'm sure, or if you've not heard the, the, the leaders in cloud, when you say cloud, which is basically big companies, which is Amazon, AWS, Amazon Web Services, there is Google, there is Microsoft, and there is Alibaba, right? In fact, Amazon has over 50% of market share in the cloud space. And then we have Google uh, Azure, which is a Microsoft company, which takes care of cloud, which, so now rather than Lazada or Amazon trying to go and buy their own servers and put it in their office, they will just go to Microsoft or to AWS and say, I need so much volume, right? And there are inherent benefits why customers do it. I will not go into the details unless you ask questions, but I do want you to know that the cost of now running this cloud infrastructure where you can host everything in a common facility will be at least one tenth of the cost, if not less, right? So uh, I don't want to go in the details. Maybe I'll do that in the next session and tell you more about why customers and why why this cloud becomes very important there are certain uh, comments that i've put in this chart which you can read as i was talking through but uh, that's basically cloud right i tried my best to simplify as much as i could uh, and we do want this to be interactive however between hamid and us we decided that if you have questions you will put it in the chat window and we have about 15 minutes at the end of the session for you for you to ask us questions. And I think the more questions you ask, the more we will be interested to come back and continue this conversation uh, with you girls, right? So we don't want it to be boring, uh, but also we want to talk about the concepts because some of you may know cloud, some of you may not be familiar with some of these terminologies. So I'm going to take a quick pause uh, any quick question you want to ask or feel free to put it in the chat if if okay there is no question on the chat so with this if i may then invite my colleague deepa who's going to tell you sorry anika was there a question have some questions i'll just okay. type them in the chat and okay okay cool yeah it, it might be helpful if you can just put the question and say who you are marking it too, it might be easier to answer. If not, any one of us will jump in and take the question. Yeah, okay, Hamid, I'm going to now let uh, Deepa come on board and talk a little about the internet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bhavika. Um, hello, everybody. It's really nice to see you all. And uh, definitely, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure that uh, although we value add uh, to the session today, uh, many of you would be already familiar with most of the uh, aspects of it. I'm very sure about that. So uh, in fact, uh, Bhavika had given a complete overview about uh, you know exactly how internet emerged and my discussion would be only on the extension on certain angles of it. So as such, Hamid has provided us all with 10 minutes. So we have to best utilize the 10 minutes. So uh, basically, um, I just want to understand um, if anybody um, in the group would would like to, uh, you know, let me know uh, before coming to the session, what expectation do you have from the session? Like, what do you think, like, uh, once we finish the session, uh, you will be more familiar with? I mean, if anybody would like to say or anybody representing the group is also fine. I think you feel free to shout the answers from your desk. I know Anika is seated a bit separately. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anika, I mean, feel free to see if anyone wants to type in if that's easier in terms of you know, what they hope to learn. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, someone was calling out from their desk. Um, have a broader understanding of what the cloud is and how it works. Broader understanding of cloud and how it works, Deepa. 
All right. Thank you so much, Hamid. Uh, so basically, that's where we are. Uh, so just to give a short introduction about me. So I have, uh, like Bhavika, have been into the sales functions and I have been at the time when emergence of internet actually started. Uh, basically, my role was to uh, communicate with uh, the leaders of internet during those times, like MCOM, uh, CompuServe, uh, America Online, uh, to make sure that the connectivity between two countries are free flowing so uh, bhavika even yes uh, when you spoke about the big cables under sea uh, so my mind took me back uh, to during those days when we used to actually underlay these kind of cables between two countries so that there is a smooth communication between uh, two, two call centers or uh, two contact centers right so uh, basically when today we talk about the digital world and when we go back to the primitive methodology that we used to uh, use during those days, there is a vast difference. So exactly what happened, like how it transformed into the digital world all the way from those cables, uh, those routers, those switches, you know, we have forgotten it all over a period of time and come to a, a, a come to an environment where we are only relying on cloud. So basically, um, uh, Okay, so I'm just looking at the chat window also, just in case if you have any queries. All right, so um, may I go to the next slide, uh, Nadia? Thank you, Nadia. So um, the complete journey emerged somewhere in 1980s, 1990s, when actually there was birth of internet and uh, internet during those days was not the same like what we have today. It has transformed, it has done its research, it has grown over a period of time. So basically internet during those days was um, actually, uh, you know, transferring small bytes of information from one ter one terminal to the another, or you can say that, um, you know, small, uh, small short messages from one phone to we had that big phone, uh, Android phone, wherein we used to type the short messages and we used to send from, uh, you know, one phone to another. So this was the kind of internet uh, emergence that we had during those days, it had a lot of constraints, although it helped us in many ways, like earlier, we used to have letter, uh, wherein we have to write a letter and post it out. Then email came in, wherein uh, it was very easier to actually communicate the red F mail during those days or uh, the Gmail. All this helped us in communicating between, you know, relators, between friends through email. That was a, a big boost, I would say. I mean, uh, as compared to what we had in the primitive age. So uh, that's how slowly and steadily from a state controlled mission, it actually transformed into a worldwide mission. So basically this was all controlled within the state, like all the short messages within the state, but later on, uh, based on the research, based on the public sector initiatives, that's when we have transformed it into a worldwide. That's when we had the first worldwide web wherein we, we can browse, we can learn more about, uh, you know, different things online. I um, basically, during those days, like um, if, if, if a question is asked, right, uh, you, you have to literally work towards it, going through the books and other things. But thanks to World Wide Web today, uh, the greatest friend of ours is Google, wherein you can add any questions there, any Q&A there, and you get an answer from that. So it's a report, repository of a whole lot of data, as we spoke about earlier, a whole lot of information, right? So you want to know about anything, you just quickly go into the World Wide Web and just search about it, whether it's relevant, not relevant, whether you need to go for it or not. And that's the end of the story. Right. So it became so, so uh, relevant that uh, the, the Internet became so relevant in a day to day basis that people slowly and steadily started getting completely dependent on it. Like, um, I mean, may it be anything, may it be uh, emailing, may it be uh, browsing, may it be blogs, may it be chatting, uh, may it be exchange of photos. So slowly it started, uh, you know, um, uh, started transforming into a giant um, uh, cloud, I would say, wherein we, we, we were able to uh, progress in many which ways. So uh, this is the emergence of internet. Um, Nadia, if you can go to the next slide, wherein I can talk more about the digital world, how it transformed. Like we all know that the digital world was always there. I mean, it, it was just that, uh, you know, uh, people, the usage, 
the the user friendliness was actually uh, not to that extent as it is today like we can still remember that you know uh, during those days also we used to shop online but maybe you know uh, one out of uh, uh, maybe um, 10,000 used to browse and shop online. But today you can see that transformation happening wherein um, a lot of people, in fact, I would say that the statistics says that, I mean, pre-COVID, uh, that is uh, pre-pandemic situation versus the post-pandemic situation, there has been almost X folds of increase online purchase, right? So maybe anything earlier, it used to be kind of a, a segregated, um, uh, I mean, a, um, a segregated package of things that we used to browse online or buy online. But nowadays, if you, you, can, you can see that even uh, our grandparents or our parents are shopping online. If they want any groceries or if they want anything else, it's, it's, it has become a day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, um, uh, how to say, a day-to-day -day, uh, source of uh, handling. So maybe any age, any gender, there is no bar. Everybody knows how to handle it, how to handle the internet and get their day going on, right? So it has minimized a lot of work. I can remember that those days, if you want to really look at, uh, you know, the article or, or the, the news postings, you have to walk down to the uh, newsstead and get buy a newspaper and then you get the news but now at the click of a button on a real time basis you know that what is the happenings in the world or you know uh, anything that would be relevant for you so this is how it has transformed just imagine the days when um, uh, when we had the school uh, in a in such an environment where the school teacher used to write down on the board and uh, she used to talk about uh, uh, you know things and she used to ask us to write down on uh, this uh, this i mean uh, how to say the notes but now just see the difference like um, creating and showcasing knowledge and develop new ways of teaching and learning that captivate and stimulate right so the imagination you have the sharing uh, with your friends you have the development of ideas so see how the um, several things are uh, actually progressing over a period of time and not only that in universities uh, of late they have a special session like the augmented reality or artificial intelligence uh, they also you know want people at a very young age students at a very young age they have they want to have that knowledge so that while by the time they reach the universities they are well versed with all these terms how it works um, you know so basically uh, for example nus nus has such a big uh, artificial intelligence uh, auditorium so wherein they have so many um, how to say trial and error uh, or testing models wherein children are actually transforming, initiating, uh, inventing so many things. And we get to know, uh, you know, so many things over a period of time. So uh, basically, this kind of digital world was there, but we, we are living in it probably, you know, more often because of the pandemic, because it has made us more reliable, more uh, sustainable over a period of time. So I would say that um, as far as cloud is concerned, as Bhavika mentioned, like cloud is a subset of uh, internet. So basically, um, in olden days, like uh, the routers and switches, what we used to handle, all these things have been scrapped out. And people like to do it everything on cloud because they feel it's secured, because they only have to um, pay as, as they use. So basically, that has become a very much user friendly, or I would say, um, uh, a much reliable source of uh, daily day-to-day um, -day activities and it has been a part of our life so it's very uh, very uh, natural right i mean you go to any um, outlet before you enter you have to do the safe entry the trace together right so basically handphone or internet has become a part of us as a as a body part and uh, basically they, we are improvising over a period of time i'm sure that um, this is not the end of it there are things that will come in the form of robotics in the form of um, you know um, maybe a smart home so there are so many things to add on to it improvise to it so it has to go a long way so this is a glimpse about a digital world that we are um, in that i would like to talk about how it transformed from a primitive to a advanced methodology so just just in case, if you have any questions, because I'm, I think I'm running out of time. So if you have any questions, you can definitely post it here, and we we would be glad to answer them. Thank you. So with, sorry. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. So uh, with that, uh, that's the end. Uh, we will definitely, you know, continue the discussion based on the interest factor and how we can mold it in the next session. And uh, with this, I'll hand it over to Suganda, my colleague, uh, who is a strategic account director for Aspire Next. Suganda, over to you. Thank you so much, Deepa. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Suganda. I recently joined uh, Aspire Next. I call it recently, still it's been a year though. <laughs> Um, but yes, I'm a new entrant in technology and it's been a phenomenal change for me, but a very, very uh, steep learning curve. And today I'm going to talk about women in technology. The intent is to inspire you all to take that plunge, get into technology and um, see, see how, it, how it works out for you guys. And I'll start that with the next slide. It's a, it's a quote from a lady called Karen from Cambridge uh, University. Nadia, if you could move to the next slide. And she said something very important. She said that it's uh, computing. Computing, when we talk about computing, it's obviously cloud. It says that it's important that women get into computing. And that's because it's too, it's, uh, it's too important to be left to men only. Um, we need to be a part of all important things in the world. And technology is just one small part of it. We cannot leave it to men. Uh, moving on to next slide. So I'd like to ask you this question. What does this 28% uh, mean? Any guesses? What do you think this number represents? Anybody? I hear that um, someone had just said that maybe it was the number or percentage of women in the computing industry. Correct, that's right. So 28% of women uh, are a part of tech world right now. What do you think is 32? No guesses. Okay, so 32% of women are in technology in Singapore. So thankfully we are doing better than rest of the world. We have more women in the technology, but there's a lot more to be desired. I mean, it has to be a good balance of 50-50. So, which is where we come in, we talk to you guys and we get more um, youngsters, younger women to get into technology. Uh, we move on to next slide. Okay, another question. Uh, it's not a question anymore, given that the animation didn't work. So um, I wanted to talk about um, this lady, Lady Ada Loveless. How many of you have heard about her? Did you read up about her? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure everyone would have. I read it in my school days as well. She's the first woman who got into technology, was involved in the first computer that was ever built. So the inspiration starts from 1800s. And imagine we had one woman who got into technology in 1800s, and we are right now at only 28% at a global level. So there's, there's so much still to be done by women. Uh, we move on to the next slide. Okay, clearly the, <laughs> the animation hasn't worked. I was about to ask you, how many of you know any women, any prominent women in technology? Yeah. Okay, so I'll quickly talk about, um, these are four women I thought were very important to talk about. They've contributed significantly, at least in the current world. So we have Sheryl Sandberg, who's the COO of Facebook. Uh, we have Susan Wojcicki, CEO of YouTube. And I picked up two relevant examples. Um, Tan Hui Ling, do you know any, do you know who she? Any guesses? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you do, great. So she is the founder of Grab. Or the, it's the Grab uh, as, a, as a company has, uh, is now valued at 5 billion, grown significantly, present in uh, 65 cities. So thanks to this, a lady and her uh, business partner. We, we now have a fantastic company in Singapore. And does anybody know about Jenny Lee? No, no. Okay, so Jenny Lee is a sole female company. She's a tech investor. She's a venture capitalist, uh, sole woman at that level, um, in, and she's a Singaporean. So I thought it, it will be good to talk about these women given their, given their contributions. Any ideas why these women have done well? Any thoughts, any, any knowledge about it? 
Um, someone said confidence. Maybe. Definitely confidence. Anything else? Inspired at a young age. Inspired at a young age. Got involved, yes, correct. Anyone else? No, nothing else. Yeah, those two. Okay, let me talk about three things that I thought stood out for these women. If you could go to the next slide. Um, there was one more slide. Okay, don't worry about it. So let me talk about what uh, what I thought stood out for them. Um, field of technology uh, was not a barrier for them. So they, uh, if you see, Susan Wojcicki was actually a historian. She studied history and literature at Harvard, but got into technology. She was involved in Google when Google was forming up in 1998. So study, uh, the field of study was not a barrier. They got into technology at a very early age and did very well. The second thing I thought was extremely inspiring was criticism. Criticism did not stop them from achieving success. And this is for uh, Sheryl Sandberg. Sheryl Sandberg was involved in that, uh, I don't know if you all know Cambridge Analytica uh, facade that happened. There was entire issue. It went up to the parliament of US. So she was the one who was blamed for the entire fallout for Cambridge Analytica. And she's still there. She's still a CEO um, in, uh, in a tech company. So it talks about that criticism did, criticism did not stop them uh, from achieving success. And the last one I would like to highlight is uh, Tan Hui Ling. She is from a very uh, humble background, a very simple living middle class person. And um, she achieved success. So she, she, was the, she is the founder of Grab and see the backgrounds also do not matter. So it is all about having the right vision, being involved in the right space and utilizing your passion to achieve success. So that's it from my side. I do hope um, this, was, uh, this was an inspirational uh, session and uh, you, you could take away something from it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I see some answers to the questions are in the chat box. And so thank you for that. Um, and we really appreciate, you know, you going through, you know, and explaining um, what cloud technology is. I know a lot of students here have such an in-depth understanding um, and even going through um, some highlights in women in tech. Uh, there's just one question, I guess, Bhavika. I yes, yes, right? yes, yes. Maybe how many minutes we have left now, Hamid? Uh, Anika, can I say we have about 10, 15 minutes? I know you would have to get to your next okay. class. Is 10 minutes okay? Okay. Um, cool. Sure. Will it, um, if, if we're short on questions, I mean, I think we can also bring some questions to the next session. Yeah. yeah. No problem. So we've got one, Anika, I think, I'm not sure who posted. Uh, so it said, how come some companies like Apple charge people for using cloud? for extra cloud space. Very, very interesting uh, question. And people who are using iPhone, uh, pr probably when they try to see the capacity, right? And then there will be an option to pay some small little fee to take more cloud uh, space, right? For your storing your photos or whatever else that you may have. So uh, in the next session, I don't know if Hamid finds useful. We'll talk a little more about what are the components and how the pricing works. But for now, uh, how essentially, there, there, there are actually three things that actually go into charging for a cloud thing. There is, there is a compute, which is the actual computation, right? The GB, the RAM, and all the, so there is compute, and then there is storage, and then there is network. So there are three different parts to it. Uh, companies like Apple, et cetera, would, let's take an example, assuming they, work with Amazon, the AWS team, globally for all Apple users, right? So there'll be like millions of Apple users all over the world. They will buy an X capacity. In most cases, why people like cloud is because you don't have to typically sign up for how much you will use because 
you don't know how much will be needed, right? So the reason cloud is so popular is because imagine it's like a pipe, but it adjusts according to uh, the data coming in, right? Or the number of users. So maybe on some shopping days, right? We see that like so many people try to buy on some specific days, right? So if I bought only so much size of the pipe, but what I need is so much, right? So this is an elastic way the cloud is basically an elastic sort of, just imagine like a pipe, which is flexible, right? So depending on so much of users, it will open and close. And the charging will depend on how much got consumed, right? So it's like pay per use or pay as you go kind of a model, which is why companies like Apple, or if you think about in the sports world, if it's a specific day and then there is, say, Olympic games, right? If on specific days, there'll be so many people trying to browse the same content, if not on their television network, on mobile phones, on laptops, right? So I've not given a specific answer, but essentially it will depend. And then it will be on Apple to say, okay, how much do I charge? And that will be a conversation that Apple in their product team will say, okay, while I pay X, how do I want to charge my customers as Y, right? So it will be a very individual company driven conversation right but definitely it's a very cheap mechanism and that's why you know people like ourselves we can actually buy x number of band or you know space so easily for such a small fee uh, on on the internet precisely so i hope that answered your question um i don't think we have any further questions sure. and i'm full of the oh, fact nice. that students should be you know getting to class and getting oh. to so thank you yes. for everyone um, and thank you so much once again, both to UWS and the um, Expire uh, team. We sure. really appreciate you calling into our uh, our meeting here. Thanks, thank Anika. Uh, ladies, thank you as well, Bhavika, Deepa, and Suganda. Thank you for the sharing. I definitely learned a lot. So I look for the next one. And to the girls at UWC, thank you for spending your uh, CCA time with us. So hopefully next week will be a good session as well. So if you have any questions along the way, I'm sure Anika, if it's okay, you can start to think about collating them and we can address them as well. So thank Absolutely. you everyone. So we'll come with to the next uh, meeting with a couple more questions. No worries at all. Great. Thank you everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a Take day. care. Bye-bye. Thank you.